Hi everyone. So let me start this video by first introducing myself. This is Ashnat Kothari here. I am a qualified associate actually. I have cleared 14 actual exams out of the possible 15 and have cleared all of these in the first attempt. I have also secured all India rank in two papers, CT6 and SP5. I have been teaching for you know more than seven years now. Uh, started when I was second year in my college. On the professional work front, uh, corporate side, I have experience of working in PNC insurance sector. I had previously worked with AXA Excel. I'm a graduate in economic honors, and I also was the BSc department topper in my college uh, from Calcutta University. So that was a brief introduction for ones who are watching our video for the first time. So in this particular video, we are going to be discussing the tentative solutions for CM1 paper A which had come in IFOA April 2023 session. Now, before we get started discussion of the paper, let me just inform all of you that the new live batches for IFOA September 2023 and IIA November 2023 session is starting from May 7. Admissions are open for it. Do keep in mind, you just have one single batch for each term for each exam. Classes will be available in live online mode, in live offline, Currently, our offline center is in Kolkata and in pre-recorded mode as well. All the students who join us do get a chance or rather do get access, complete access to all the pre-recorded content. And along with that, they have the option to attend the live classes either in offline or online form, whichever is convenient for them as per their availability. We would be creating study groups wherein we share the weekly tasks to ensure that all students be it ones who are currently studying in the college, be it ones who are working, have something of a target, you know, so that they can plan their studies accordingly and they always have the constant push or let's say external motivation to be regular with their preparation. Now, as for the mode of our classes, most of our life classes would be on the weekends. That will ensure that students, whether working, not working in college, can attend the life classes and the timings does not clash. There would be certain live classes or on weekdays as well, primarily in the initial stages to ensure that preparation, uh, that syllabus is being covered at a good pace. We intend to complete the syllabus from our part around first week of May itself. So basically from 7th May to 7th August is what we are targeting right now. Now the focus of the live classes is basically to ensure that the students studying for a particular paper in a particular batch have all the adequate concepts. It could be that we are teaching primarily in a particular session for a paper, paper A concepts. It could be paper B concepts. It could be question solving, doubt clearing. Point is wherever the students who are studying from us in a particular session are facing issues in, the live classes would be, you know, focusing on them so that these, uh, you know, concerns or these doubts, queries are resolved and we can Make sure that a student has a pretty good learning experience, not just from exam clearing point of view, but also from the point of view of being able to understand the concepts and the ability to apply them in the ever changing, you know, real world scenarios. We always motivate students or we always push students to start early. I personally feel that starting early is one of the most underrated things uh, in the eyes of others, but something which is extremely impactful. To promote that, we are having attractive early bird offers for ones who are enrolling for the classes by April end. These are customized on an individual basis depending on which papers they have cleared, which papers they are planning to give. So in case you are planning to start your preparation under our guidance, do join us today for a meaningful, impactful and wonderful learning experience. Overall, CS1 paper of this session was relatively an easier one itself. In case you observe any sort of calculation errors or any other sort of errors in this video, please do let us know through the comments section. Also, in case of any rectifications, we would be pushing those in the pinned in the comment section and we'll be pinning it. So while watching this video, do take a look at the pinned comment section as well in case of any rectifications to the solutions discussed in this particular video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you are updated with the you know, paper B release whenever it is uploaded as well as, you know, other educational content we would be uploading. And in case you find this video useful, please do like it as well. So 
let's take a look at the first question. We have X and Y PDFs have been given. If you could recognize X is nothing but a gamma distribution, Y is nothing but exponential. Uh, and now we need to find the random variable Z. So identify the distribution of Y with its parameter. So Y is nothing but a gamma distribution itself. And then in part two, it's about Z. So let's take a look at it. X follows gamma two comma Y or rather, sorry, I have interchanged X and Y. Yeah. X follows gamma two comma lambda. Y follows exponential lambda or equivalently gamma one comma lambda. Then it's Z equal to X plus Y. Find out the MGF itself. So Z follows nothing but gamma three comma Y. And in part two, it's corresponding with the PDF. And it's coming out to be option B. Straightforward question relatively. Question number two, we need to compute probability. Again, it's a relatively very straightforward question. There's a look at the solution. It's coming out to be 0 0.084, double to four, so on. Part three, we need to find the standard deviation. Now, if you would recognize from the MGF, this is nothing but that of a gamma distribution with parameter alpha being nothing but four and lambda being nothing but one by 2500. So if you would remember those variance of a gamma distribution is nothing but alpha by lambda square. And you can use that as to you know, cross check uh, your final answer. We are getting the standard deviation as 5000. And this is exactly had we taken, let's say root alpha by lambda. So that's just ensures, you know, that whatever calculations you're performing, it's consistent. Since they had emphasized to use MGF, this is the way. Alternatively, one could have used CGF function and argued that CGF is nothing but ln MXT proceeded accordingly. It would have just made all these computations maybe slightly more easier, but uh, this is the more usual approach, you know, full proof on ensuring that full marks should be awarded given the wordings of the question. Next, we have question four. And take a look at the solution over here. So it's 0.14, that particular option we'll be using. So we have 0.14 in option A. And then part two, we need to calculate. It's coming out to be 0 0.08954. Note that I had uh, used Excel uh, to get this particular value. You could use any other thing. You could use R programming. You could use actual tables, interpolate, any other method. Answer will be somewhat similar to this. And all of them should be acceptable but always preferably do mention the source from wherever you're getting these particular values. Next, we have question five. This is one question which is relatively straightforward. Something for the ones you know who have studied from us, we already have covered such a question in the class. Yet, uh, um, I did, you know, when interacting through our you know, students as well as other students, many of them have uh, done, you know, poorly in this particular question. So we need to find the posterior probability. And here, if you realize this is nothing but just, you know, inverting using applying, uh, let's say the base theorem, that's all we need to do over here. So we need probability of H equal to 0 0.3 by given X is nine, define what X is, use the base theorem to kind of, let's say, invert it. And I've computed the associated probabilities. So the final answers are this. Next, moving forward to question six. Part one, explain whether the analyst is right. Yes, it is correct. If for more than three, if we consider this to be four, then we can find the lowest possible expected value because it could be four more than four. Anything, if we are taking it to be four, then we can find the lower limit of this expectation. So yes, the analyst is right in its claim in that particular way. Part two, we need to compute expectation X and then there is part three as well. So here are the other calculations. Pretty straightforward for part two. We just take four to get the lower one. We get in 1.64. It has been given that expectation of X, given that X is greater than three is 4.5. So the last value where we were taking four, now we can take 4.5 and we'll be getting on solving 1.655. Another way to quickly do is, you know, everything remains the same. Only thing is changing is instead of four, we have 4.5. So we just need to add certain term to 1.64 and that term will be 0 0.5 into 0 0.03. And this will give you the same answer. That was just another quick hack to get the calculation. I have given yet the full steps so that everyone understands. Next, we have question seven. This is again one of those questions uh, where students did struggle. 
somewhat. Uh, again, keep in mind, uh, I, there's probably a typing error in my understanding. There should be a minus sign over here. XT square option V is the one which I'm getting. Or alternatively, there should be another set of brackets over here. Okay, so this is what we're getting. Question seven, the likelihood we have two sets of data for X and for Y, we multiply both of them. So therefore you're getting one by root two pi and one another one by root two pi, which becomes one by two pi. If you've got this, you know, if you take a look at the options, there is this one option B, which is having one by two pi. And the rest of the terms are obviously consistent, but this is just another way through elimination, which one could use to you know, shorten that time. Next part B, uh, I have written option B, although there is missing brackets or wrong sign of X T square. Then part two, I get the log likelihood differentiated. I'm getting theta hat as nothing but Y bar by X bar. Part three, CRLB, which I'm getting as nothing but uh, two by N and part four, this is the asymptotic distribution. Next, moving forward to question eight, this is from GLM. Some of them did, uh, you know, perform this question pretty well, basis my interaction, and some of them did make errors in part one, which, you know, they carried forward to certain other parts as well. The key to understand is that this particular linear predictor is for P itself. And here P is nothing but the mean of binomial, the, dist the required distribution. The mean of binomial distribution is 60. But the mean of this particular distribution is P itself. If we'll take a look at the material as well, they have clearly mentioned that the canonical link function is used to estimate mu where mu is the mean and as well as the probability. So take a look at the workings. Mm, question seven. Okay. I guess question seven is being missed over here. Okay, we'll come back to it. I'll push in the solutions of question seven. Theta hat. Uh, okay, sorry. We just covered question seven. It's question eight itself, which we're trying to take a look at. This is not question eight. Um, yeah, sorry. This is question eight itself. So we need to test whether beta one is zero. Beta one is not equal to zero. Perform this test. Some of you have taken T n minus two, but here simulations has been carried out. We do not know how many simulations have been made. We cannot use T distribution as such. Some of you might have confused N as six with the binomial parameter. So getting an extremely small P value. So we would have sufficient evidence to reject S not even at very high you know, confidence level or at a very low level of significance. So this is at 99.99% confidence level or basically 0.0, .0 and level of significance. Part two, log P by one minus P, the canonical link function, log it function is beta naught plus beta one X. We get an estimate of P itself. Keep in mind, P is coming out to be very high. Expected value is six P, getting this up to three decimal places. Part four is uh, that at least, you know, five parts should be working. So therefore the number of defects or the parts breaking down should be, you know, zero or one itself. We have computed that values probability by is zero or one. It's coming out to be very, very small. So we can come in. It's going to be extremely unsafe at this particular temperature. Part five asks us what if you use the log function, it can give a value of more than one. If you're using a log canonical function, it can give a value of more than one. And that will not make sense because the probability term must lie between zero to one. Next question. Number nine, this was something which was well performed by students. Let's quickly glance at the solution for same. So what to be option D part one, this is part two. And part three is this. Here, you know, we have not taken two in constant because such was the structure. They have asked you soon, else we could have just taken this two in constant uh, proportionality sign as well. This is part four. So what option C and part five, six. Six by 13 and one by 13, one, one marks each. This was a pretty straightforward question. Last question. 
which we had question number 10. Again, this is a typical question which has you know, come of late. Uh, some of the students did perform well, some of them did struggle in certain parts. So let's quickly glance through the solutions. And this is the first part. This is the equation which we're finally getting. That is A is 37 and B we have already calculated. Then we're getting R as 0.8296. Part 3 we're testing. Fisher transformation test. You know, this session Fisher transformation test had its application in CS2 paper as well. And a lot of students had simply forgotten it and they you know, actually did struggle to solve the question. That was on another note. So here I'm getting test statistic as 0.2646. P value I'm getting as 0.7913, which is very high. So we would have insufficient evidence to reject H0 at let's say a standard 5% level of significance. Or even if we take 20%, 40%, 50%, we'll still have insufficient evidence. Part four, we have this particular expression and then the next part is given over here. These are the workings. This is 99% confidence interval. And then for part six, these are the ranks, square of ranks we computed, we are getting a slightly lesser value. So all the numerical questions I have discussed, comments part I'm not discussing because again, some of you might have commented on a different set of lines. If the examiner finds them relevant, they would be awarding marks accordingly. Hope that you did find this video useful. Thanks.